Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a quick screencast for the cell cycle and mitosis for all of you that, for all of you that need a little assistance with that process because it is uh, a lot, there's a lot of details to it. I'm going to give you the screencast and for those of you that wish to, to study over the break a little bit, this should help. So there's a lot of details here. Let's just quickly run through it. The cell cycle can be divided into two phases. The first phase is uh, interphase. Second phase is the mitotic phase. Interphase is composed of three parts. You have G1, S, and G2. All of interphase is characterized by cell growth. So during this time period, you have the cell expanding, the cytoplasm volume, increasing, organelles are being duplicated. What's unique about S phase of interphase is that this is the only part where DNA is synthesized. So this is where you get DNA duplication. Everything else you get cell growth, basically preparation for the actual dividing of the genetic material, which occurs in the mitotic phase. Okay, so the mitotic phase is composed of mitosis, that's one part. And the second part is cytokinesis. During mitosis, you get the actual separation of the duplicated genetic information, genetic material. So during mitosis, sister chromatids, which are duplicated chromosomes ultimately, are separated through prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We'll get to that in a, in a moment. The second part of mitotic phase is cytokinesis, which basically separates the cytoplasm, separates the organelles, and basically does the physical separation of that initial cell into two daughter cells. Okay, so each part of the cell cycle has a unique role. We're not going to talk too much about interphase. I'll tell you a little bit about interphase, but it's just to repeat what, we're, what I've already stated. We will pretty much be focusing on the steps of mitosis for this review uh, of this information. So for interphase, you see several things that are characteristic of interphase. The first is that this duplicated genetic material, so if this is post S phase or after S phase, you have duplicated genetic information, but it's not condensed. So it's basically exists as chromatin, which are proteins attached to DNA. And it's these thin strands, so it's not condensed, and it's essentially a, a, a ball of twine, very loose. You can't even actually see it on a microscope, in a microscope. Uh, the other thing that you see are uh, duplicated centrioles. So uh, each pair of centrioles here makes up a, a centrosome. So you get duplication of them during interphase. And that something's going to happen to them uh, later on in some other steps, so keep that in mind. Now, it's come to this. Uh, to help you visualize the steps of mitosis, we're going to do a little visualization here. So for prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, which can be put into PP mat, uh, I want you to visualize these things called puppy pee pads. Apparently these actually exist. Um, puppy pee pads, kind of like a pee pee mat. Uh, so think of a, uh, for all you visual learners, I guess, uh, think of dogs, this this cute little dog. Um, you know, um, peeing on a mat, I guess, for, for lack of a better, better term. So if you can visualize the dog peeing on the pee pad, uh, you have your PMAT, you have your steps of mitosis, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the first step of mitosis is prophase. Okay, so there's a logic to this, guys. If you think about the things that need to happen for mitosis to occur, for separation of duplicated genetic material to occur, there is a logical flow of steps here. 
Now we mentioned in an interphase that the DNA, the duplicated sister chromatids, that all the DNA is basically in a thin, not even visible strand of DNA. What happens during prophase is that this DNA starts to condense. So you start to begin to see chromosomes here. So these are chromosomes that consist of sister chromatid pairs and they're starting to become visually distinct because that genetic material is starting to condense. Now there's a reason for this, so there's a logic to this, I guess I should say. In interphase, if you were to try to move that ball of DNA around, it's essentially like pulling strings of a ball of twine, right? So it's very hard, hard to separate those strings uh, in that manner. But if you condense it, you have a unique chromosome here, you can actually physically move this a lot easier. The second thing that occurs, in addition to this DNA condensation, is that these centrosomes, which were previously side by side, begin to migrate. So uh, this centrosome right here will eventually migrate so that it's on the opposite side of the cell, so different poles. This is accomplished um, in part by mitotic spindles. So these spindles right here, uh, which are made of microtubules, are going to start to, to form also and push that centrosome to the opposite pole. Prometaphase is the next step in the process. And a lot actually occurs during prophase. This is sometimes a, a phase that textbooks don't mention. I think it's rather important. Uh, so your, your, your AP test may actually say PMAT, but in reality, just know that it's PPMAT, and this might be the, the step that they've omitted, uh, I guess, to, to their detriment, in my opinion, right? So the chromosomes, the sister chromatid pairs at this point, are fully condensed. You can see that here. This is the characteristic uh, chromosome, which is made up of sister chromatids, right? So there's one sister there, there's one sister there. Still technically one chromosome until it separates, but let's call it sister chromatid pairs for now. They're fully condensed. At this point, the nucleus, which you've see, you saw in prophase, is fragmented. So there's a logic here with this step as well. If you're going to make attachments from the, centro, uh, from the centrosomes using these mitotic spindles, these microtubule spindles, you need to fragment that nucleus to have access to that genetic material, right? So that, that genetic wall, that wall, the nucleus, needs to go. Um, at this point, you're starting to get mitotic spindles attaching to sister chromatid pairs. They attach at this uh, zone of the sister chromatid called the centromere. Okay, within the centromere, there is this black spot right here, which is a uh, collection of proteins called the kinetochore that actually makes the attachment with the mitotic spindle. So keep that in mind. Uh, in, in most instances, you'll see uh, attachments from both ends of the pole, right? So you get a microtubule here attaching to this kinetochore and one here. That's what we're striving for. We're striving for attachments from both centro, uh, both centrosomes, right? In this instance, you only have one attachment, right? So this sister chromatid pair runs the risk of being stuck down here with this centrosome. That's bad news. What you need is this other uh, mitotic spindle to come make an attachment, and that's my guess is what's going to happen right there. Is uh, that that spindle right there is going to make that attachment? Okay. Not all, uh, not all of the. Um, Mitotic spindles make attachments with uh, sister chromatids. So some of these non-kinetochore microtubules, so some of these non-sister chromatid attaching microtubules uh, do not interact with genetic material. Instead, they interact with one another. And you'll see later on down the road that the, the, these interactions, so these interactions of mitotic spindles that don't contact chromosomes is actually important for the elongating of the cell as we're about to, uh, to pinch off into separate daughter cells. So keep that in mind uh, as well. I think we're done with prometaphase here. Next we move on to metaphase, right? So if, if your microtubules have now made attachments to the cystochromatid pairs from both poles, 
as is shown here and as is shown here. And if both poles, both centrosomes, make an equal pull on these histochromatid pairs, essentially what you're going to result in is a uh, dead even tug of war, right? So for those of you that have played tug of war before, if you put a flag in the middle of the rope and both teams are equally matched, that flag essentially goes nowhere. So in this example, the flag are these cystochromatid pairs. Equal force is being exerted, thus these uh, cystochromatid pairs are lining up dead center inside the cell at a place called the metaphase plate. Metaphase is a very easy phase of mitosis to spot because you'll just see all your chromosomes lined up dead center inside the cell. Anaphase is also an easy one to spot, in my opinion. So an anaphase, if you remember in metaphase here, you have uh, cystochromatid pairs that have attachments uh, right along the side. So for this cystochromatid pair, you're going to see that there's something here that's actually attaching this cystochromatid to that cystochromatid. These proteins that keep these cystochromatids attached are called cohesins. Right, so they're attachment proteins. Once anaphase uh, comes around, the attachments, these cohesions, these attachments between the sister chromatids are cleaved. Okay, so basically that allows the sister chromatids to go to the pole, to go to the centro, uh, centro, centrosome that is exerting force on it, that's pulling on it, right? So uh, each sister chromatid which is, out, which is now technically a chromosome. Once the chromo sister chromatids are separated, this is now a chromosome. It'll go to that to its respective uh, centrosome. And it'll go in this V-shaped pattern, right? Because you, you exert a force on the kinetochore dead center here. And as it's pulled in, essentially they're reeled in towards the centro, uh, centrosome. You're gonna you're gonna get retraction in this V-shaped pattern. Okay. As I stated before, these non-kinetochore microtubules are still in contact and are essentially going to keep contact with each other and keep lengthening. What this lengthening does is it's going to stretch the cell a little bit so that when we get to the next step, when we get to telophase and cytokinesis, this will facilitate separation of this cell into two daughter cells. So that is shown right here, actually. Our new chromosomes are now going to begin to decondense, meaning they're not going to be tightly raveled anymore. They're going to go back to a state where they're unwound. This is going to occur once this nucleus is reformed, right? So we need to reform our nuclear envelope. Once that's reassembled, we have a nucleus. The condensed DNA will decondense and it'll go back to just being a nucleus containing genetic material, which is, is the way a cell is, and then it'll go off to maybe divide again. Before that can happen, though, we need cytokinesis to occur. So cytokinesis is going to happen here in the center of the cell. So you get the uh, formation of a cleavage furrow. And basically what, what's going to happen there is you're going to squeeze off, you're going to pinch off uh, two new daughter cells, each of which have equal amounts of cytoplasm, each of which have organelles that were duplicated during interphase um, the previous round. Okay, so that, that basically covers the whole process. Okay, so stick with this stuff. If you have questions, you can email me or see me after class. You, you want to stop and think about some of these steps because there's a real logical flow to it. Uh, next screencast I'll, I'll put together is for regulation, so that'll be NPF and all the other regulations we talked about in class. Um, have a good Thanksgiving. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I hope you rest up and, and come back ready to, to do as well as you did in the first trimester. Okay, Talk to you soon. Happy Thanksgiving.